It's February 2nd, 2009, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. Do you want me to go and trash your lights? Do you want me to go and trash them? Then why are you trashing my scene? Shouted actor Christian (laughs) Bale at a colleague on the set of the Hollywood film Terminator Salvation, a recording of which was posted by the celebrity gossip website TMZ on this day in 2009. I cannot believe this is over 10 years ago. I can't believe it. I'm so (laughs) angry about it. But yeah, but arguably his off the rails rant went on to become bigger and more successful than the film itself. Isn't that the weird thing about it? <laughs> yeah, I've never seen the film. I've seen the rant numerous times. Well, the full story of it is that in July 2008, so a bit before the actual reporting happened by TMZ, Christian Bale was filming a quite intense scene in New Mexico for Terminator Salvation, and the film's director of photography, Shane Hurlbert, walked past Bale's eyeline, and the actor just went into this absolute sort of unhinged, I mean, there is no other word for it. It is a rant. It's just like, just absolutely trying to humiliate him, lecturing him. And he basically made it clear that if Hurlbert uh, was to repeat the error and was not subsequently fired, then he was going to leave himself. But Hurlbert, you hear kind of calmly in the background apologizing and saying, look, I'm I'm really sorry. But it just doesn't stop Bale, who is in total full flight and just going for it, letting rip. Okay, but to come in as Bale's advocate, this was supposedly not the first time that Hurlbert had done this. He actually mentions that in the rant that he was doing it for a second time. And also, it is apparently a huge faux pas on set to move around in the actor's sightline while they're acting. You know, you can imagine, of course, it'd be very distracting if you're trying to get into character and someone's pootling around literally a few metres in front of you, fiddling about with the lights. That's not to say that it's acceptable. I I think we can all agree that there are ways and ways that you can address (laughs) that issue. I'm not being invited to work with Christian Bale, but I I wouldn't after hearing that. No. I actually would not work for him (laughs) or with him. Well, the fact I just said for him is a <laughs> revealing Freudian slip, isn't it? Because it's what it absolutely sort of unearths is the power of the star at the centre of these film sets, isn't it? You know, he, it's basically because he's the star, no one disagrees with him. It goes on for three minutes, this rant. I listened back to it today for the first time since 2009. And it's not just Hilbert. Everyone in the background is going, sure, sure, Christian. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Whilst he's yeah. being an absolute ass, no <laughs> one says to him, Chill out, stop it, you're wrong. Like, we've got your point, move on. Because they're worried for their own jobs, because he's the star. Yeah, and I think a lot of people remember it as being a lowly crew member. But it wasn't. It was, as you say, the director of photography, who on the set is really second only to the director. So if that's the way that the stars are talking to the people who behind the scenes are the people who are making the film happen. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, whether that makes it better or worse. I think a lot of people remember it as him you know, screaming at some poor crew member mm. who's just trying to fix a light, where in reality it was someone who was extremely powerful on the set. Well, if you go on to Hilbert's IMDb, He makes very little of this, I think, because he wants to be regarded as an artist with many broader achievements than just this moment where he got shouted at. But I think that there were certain ways that people wanted to forgive Christian Bale, certainly after uh, the rant uh, came to light and were defending him, saying, well, he was in character. This was this is a great method actor doing his methody thing. And he was struggling to uh, distinguish reality from fiction. And that's yeah, what Christian that Bale excuse, said himself. He did an interview with a, a radio station in California. And listening back to it now, it just sounds a bit like Prince Andrews in some ways. I'm too <laughs> it noble, so doesn't does. it? Yeah. He's just like, maybe I care too much. Maybe right. I'm just too good an actor that I'm too passionate about my role. And this yeah. is him apologising unreservedly. I mean, he's quite clear that it was the wrong behaviour and he made a mistake and it was unforgivable. But even within that, he's still kind of explaining it by saying, you have to understand how passionate I am about my job. Yeah. Yeah, but it, well, I mean, the whole thing was blown up quite a lot by the press. You know, it's the sort of thing that the tabloids call a foul mouth tirade. But the ferocity of it is intense, Rebecca. I mean, how many F words are I there? I know, but if you... I just think you have to look at it... Like some of the stuff where, for instance, it kept, was being reported everywhere that he'd threatened to trash Herbert's lights. But when you read it in context, it's clearly a rhetorical comparison to Herbert's supposed trashing of Bale's scene. He's saying, how would you like if I trash your lights? Mm. He's not literally saying, I'm going to come over there and destroy all the lights. Well, you know, it did get blown out of proportion 
wasn't a bit he wasn't actually threatening him why am i i don't know why i'm doing this guys <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually I don't didn't know. i didn't intend <laughs> to come in with any particular opinion <laughs> well the reason that the recording exists in the first place is that the production company got very nervous that bale was going to follow through on his threat to quit the picture and so they had actually sent this uh, piece of audio to the insurers potentially to be able to level i assume a claim against him if he you know violated his contract by not completing the film I mean, it does raise the question though of how many times this happens on film sets where it either doesn't happen to be caught on audio recording right. or the audio recording is suppressed before it can be leaked because you know the response from people in the industry i mean obviously more so from the actors and from the crew was that yeah this was bad behavior but they weren't necessarily shocked by it so it does make you wonder what goes on generally on sets that never makes it to the public well i've been in the subreddit public freakout rebecca <laughs> uh, I can tell you that amongst the Hollywood public freakouts in there, uh, there's obviously Tom Cruise on the COVID rules on the Mission Impossible set. That was last year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was good. Which actually, looking back on it, I thought, you know, he comes across as a bit entitled, but he is Tom Cruise. I thought he actually he had a point. Uh, and yeah, he's making a very good point. That, he's trying to keep those... everyone on the set in their job, which is slightly different to like being a prima donna. The opposite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Klaus Kinski, uh, who's a German actor who was filmed by Werner Herzog, berating a production manager on set with the words you can lick my ass somebody needs to hit you in the face uh, which was a jeremy clarkson style rant about the catering um and possibly the harshest which is david o russell i think everyone oh, yeah. knows david o russell's a bit of a bully oh, yeah. anyway but there's, there's footage of him on youtube calling lily tomlin a c- and like throwing papers in her face she's like 80 years old that's uh, awful he also got into a fist fight with george clooney on the set of three kings and who would um, fight clooney I know, he's, he's so charming and also he'd probably have you, you know. <laughs> I could tell, Ari, in the exact moment in that sentence when you realised what Ollie meant. <laughs> yeah. Like, both yeah, those, you're right, he's so charming. Reasons. How yeah. could anyone fight him? <laughs> Well, uh, th- but fighting fighting is a thing that happens on sets and, you know, f- also relatively famously, LL Cool J and Jamie Foxx got into a, f- a physical fight on the set of any given Sunday. So, you know, Rebecca, you're probably right. They're all at it. You know, Bale's as innocent and blameless as any other, unfortunately, <laughs> aggressive <laughs> Hollywood star. I do think that part of the reason that it drew so much ire, especially in the UK, was that up until this point, Bale had kind of been seen as this British star who'd made it big in Hollywood. And that that kind of behaviour, it's it's not only is it rude, obviously, but it was also seen almost as a kind of a betrayal of how we want British stars in Hollywood to act. Mm. You know, we have a certain image. We want them all to be Emma Thompson. Very dry and reserved. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. As they accept their Oscar, parodying their own importance. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It reminds me of Jim Broadbent, actually. Jim Broadbent, when he got his Oscar, the first thing he said was, Stone the Crows. I thought, that's it. (laughs) That's what we want all British stars to be. Yeah. (laughs) Instead, it seemed like he'd succumbed to the emotional excesses of Hollywood. I think that was met with, yeah, sort of almost a feeling of betrayal. But I think it actually did get explained away by a lot of people uh, as being a part of his art, a part of his craft. You know, that is the reason it happened. I don't doubt that's the reason it happened, but it doesn't stop making him an arsehole, does it? No, I think that's right. That, that, (laughs) you know, that Bale is famous for, like, gaining lots of weight for his role in Vice as Dick Cheney and then losing lots of weight. for his his role in The Machinist. He is one of those Dustin Hoffman, De Niro, Daniel Day-Lewis kind of actors who is meant to be so in the role that he, you know, that he can no longer kind of get himself out of it. But I think that that was kind of intention against the fact that it was so laughable. And it was brilliant that within 24 hours of this thing coming out, there'd been this uh, dance remix released. But I think that dance remix got more views than the actual audio footage in the end. (laughs) Yeah. Well, because it was it was brilliant and it was funny and I think it was immediately all of that sort of seriousness was being undercut by this hilarious dance rhythmic backbeat that the was seriousness being, should have been undercut by the to. fact that in the first place he was on the set of Terminator 4. I mean, hello. <laughs> right. You know, is, yeah. this is not great art that he was making in the first place. I mean, what's what's the point of all the intensity? I mean, I know that you're paying for Christian Bale, so you want a method actor, but he is playing John Connor in this scene. It was hardly Schindler's List. In fact, you, uh, Terminator Salvation is probably best remembered now as pub quiz trivia as to what was the film set yeah. on which Christian Bale <laughs> made his famous run. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> the fact that Bale himself 
at the time thought he hadn't crossed a line despite behaving so badly is indicated at the end of the clip where he says I mean, it's my favorite moment where like having just <laughs> sworn and effed and jeffed at this guy for three and a half minutes he says <laughs> you and me are done professionally you know as yeah. if, like, on a personal basis we're still great mates yeah yeah we've yeah, got yeah. great mutual respect <laughs> can't you hear it <laughs> it's like you're a nice guy but you're a idiot <laughs> as soon as i'm done shouting let's definitely go for a beer <laughs> tomorrow just come and put your feet up in my house it's like the andy warhol factory but for gunslingers <laughs> yeah. love the show support the show patreon.com slash retrospectors part of the acast creator network